This is Cashflow Ninja, episode 89 with Ken Corsini. Welcome to the Cashflow Ninja, the podcast empowering and inspiring people to discover how to generate their own income and manage, grow, and protect their own wealth in the new economy. Now, here is your host, MC Laubscher. Hello everyone, MC Lobster here and welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Ninja. I'm excited to be joined today by Ken Corsini. Ken is the host of the popular podcast Deal Farm and has 10 years of full-time real estate investing experience. His company Georgia Residential Partners buys and sells on average uh, of 100 deals per year and has helped hundreds of investors around the country make great investments in the Atlanta market. Ken has a business degree from the University of Georgia and a master's degree in building construction from Georgia Tech. Ken is also currently filming a show with his wife 4 HD TV, a season of 13 episodes that will air in 2017. Please share your feedback and thoughts on today's interview and let me know your feedback on Twitter. You can tweet me at MC Lobsher or by email info at CashflowNinja.com. And please remember to join our mailing list by signing up at CashflowNinja.com or texting CashflowNinja, one word, all capitalized, to 44222. That's two fours and three twos. As some of my listeners may know, I live in Newtown, Pennsylvania, a town that's about 45 minutes away from Philadelphia, the birthplace of the United States, the home of the cheesesteak, the Rocky Steps, and also the hometown of the beloved founding father, Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin believed in investment and knowledge pays the best interest, and early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. The Cashflow Ninja have aligned itself with partners that aims to empower you to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. A healthy partner on it provides supplements, nutrient dense and earth grown foods and fitness equipment to help you achieve your next level of well being and total human optimization. Our listeners can get a 10% discount with coupon code GET ON IT at CashflowNinjaHealth.com. Our wealthy partner Fundrise gives everyone the opportunity to invest directly in high quality real estate without the middleman. Fundrise makes the process of investing in the highest quality commercial real estate from around the country simple, efficient, and transparent. You can get started with as little as $1,000, and you do not have to be an accredited investor to participate in some of their offerings. You can check them out at CashflowNinjaWealth.com. And don't forget our wise partner, Audible. You can download any audiobook for free when you try Audible for 30 days. You can download your free audiobook at CashflowNinjaBook.com. Dot com. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas from Entrepreneur on Fire, and you're listening to the Cashflow Ninja Podcast with your host, MC Lobsher. You must be prepared to ignite. Ken, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Can you please share a little bit about your background and your journey as a real estate investor and how you got started in the real estate business? So interesting story. I was uh, out of school. I graduated in 99 and I went to, I was a University of Georgia graduate and I went to work for Marshall McLennan, a big uh, insurance brokerage and actually did really well there. Five years, became assistant vice president, got vested, actually was wor working with other Fortune 500 companies. But, you know, if you're an entrepreneur at heart, you just know that's not necessarily what's fulfilling you. And so I wanted to get into real estate in some form or fashion. So you know, driving back and forth to work, I'm listening to you know, different real estate CDs, Carlton Sheets, just trying to learn as much as I could about real estate. And I was super anxious to figure out how I could get in. Should I buy a rental property? Should I? And you know, all these ideas are swirling around my head. And it got to a breaking point for me where I was like, you know what? I've just got to do this. I'm still in my 20s. I've got a lot of life ahead of me. And I literally just quit my day job and said, I'm going to figure this real estate thing out. And so at the time, I bought into what was quasi a franchise, actually. It was really a company that was doing training on how to do assignments. And so I 
started running ads in the newspaper and started taking phone calls and I figured out how to find lease purchase tenants and then I figured out how to find investors and I started partnering them up together and putting together transactions and in my first two years I did about 75 deals and nice. uh, and was hooked but but that was right around 2005 to 2007 so 2007 you know exactly what happened the right. market tanked this company I'd kind of been working with, they went out of business and I was like, well, what am I going to do now? So that's when I sort of made a pivot to the turnkey model, which if you're familiar with the turnkey model, it's, it's basically where when you're a provider, you're taking a distressed property, you're fixing it up, you're putting a tenant in place, you're stabilizing it, and then you're selling it to another investor as a, as basically a turnkey cash flowing property. And so that had really that was really my model for the last 10 years is we were a turnkey provider here in the Atlanta area. And most of the investors that have bought from us are out of state investors, you know, a lot of West Coast investors who, who don't you know, obviously in their backyard, they can't buy a house for seventy, eighty thousand dollars with eight, nine hundred dollars in rent. So they come to somebody like me who's already found the house, already stabilized the asset. I already have property management in place. We have lending in place. And so we've we've then sold those properties to those types of investors. And we've done really well with that model. And a lot of our investors have done really well buying through us. Uh, and that's sort of been our core business. Now, here in the last maybe two years, three years, as the market in Atlanta has changed, and there's been a lot of appreciation, there's a lot of uh, demand from owner occupants, we've made another shift in our business now where now the majority of our business is just straight fix and flip and new construction. And that's just really a function of just the market we're in. That's sort of what the market's giving us. And so that's, that's the way we're operating right now. So that's sort of it in a, in a nutshell. Yeah, I've heard that the Atlanta market is pretty good for cash flow and then the appreciation, as you mentioned. Um, what are some of the uh, other desirable aspects that, uh, that a lot of people are looking at this market? Well, you know, a lot of folks, when they're looking to buy a turnkey property, they're looking at different markets and they're trying to weigh, you know, what, what market's going to give me cash flow, what's going to give me uh, appreciation. Atlanta is one of those interesting markets where the prices aren't crazy, so you can, you can get cash flow. But they're also – it's a growing market, obviously. It's a growing economy. So you also get appreciation, which has made it sort of one of those unique markets that, to me, I think it's a great market to invest in compared to like a Midwestern market where maybe there's not a lot of appreciation, but maybe you're getting solid cash flow. But, I mean, Atlanta as a whole, I mean, has a reputation for being very business-friendly. Uh, and as a result, there's a lot of new job creation. There's a lot of population growth here. Um, and so that just really feeds into the, into the real estate economy. Yeah, I just the first thing that comes to mind when I think of Atlanta too is jobs. A lot Absolutely, a lot of headquarters there, Coca Cola and mm -hmm. and so forth. A number of them. So no, uh, definitely. So you've you've touched a little bit on on the Atlanta uh, market uh, currently, and I know real estate is 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 local, and every single market is different. But if you just have to give a a little bit of an overview of the state of the real estate market nationally, where we're at, uh, what are some of the things that you're seeing? You know. Interest rates are obviously still good. I mean, there's been a little uptick here recently, but I mean, you look historically at where interest rates have been and where they are today. It's it's ridiculous how low they are. I think I bought my my first house back in when 2000. I think I my interest rate literally was eight percent, which is unheard of in today's market. Where now, you know, if it creeps up to four, people are panicking. I mean, right now people are getting to three. So, interest rates are good. I mean, a, a, a appreciation is obviously strong in a lot of markets where we didn't have that before. I think there's a lot of that's still potentially recovery and pent up demand from the downturn. Um, in my understanding is that the fundamentals are still good. You know, they're not necessarily giving away loans like they were in the good old days. You know, we, we had a pulse and you could get a loan. I feel like the fundamentals are still strong. So there's not necessarily a bubble in terms of a mortgage crisis. Right. Um, and what I'm saying is just, you know, uh, the home, home, the home ownership is strong right now. No, that's great. And and some of the other things that we look at too for investors and people looking outside of their state, especially if you're in California probably, is uh, landlord and tenant relationships and laws, right? Um, mm. What are uh, some of – is it favorable? Can you give us just a little overview of the – just the landlord and tenant laws in Georgia? 
Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Compared to, especially compared to a state like California, um, they're actually very landlord friendly, which is obviously very helpful for us selling to out of state investors, but also us owning investment properties ourselves. Um, it's not hard to get an eviction here. I mean, that's usually what people, it's really what you're insinuating is how quickly could you do the tenant out if you needed to, what are their, what are the rights of the landlord versus the rights of the tenant? And in, in Georgia, you can typically have uh, a tenant out within 30 to 45 days. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is very strong. Now, the other question that I had just doing a little bit of research on the, if, if, there's a lot of exciting stuff going on for you. Um, uh, there's a show that uh, that you're going to be involved with on HDTV that's currently being filmed. Can you t- uh, share a little bit about the show with my listeners and uh, tell them where to find the show? Sure. So we were fortunate enough to be contacted Man, almost two years ago, believe it or not, that's how long the process takes um, wow. to put together a pilot for HGTV. And uh, a year ago, we actually filmed the pilot. And then in the spring of, uh, of this year, the pilot aired. It was called Flipping the South. And, uh, and it did really well. And that's sort of what they were waiting to see as if uh, the viewership was strong. And so they went ahead and ordered a series. And so my wife and I have been filming a series for HGTV since July of this year. And we actually wrap up right here at the end of the year. So 13 additional episodes, and uh, and honestly, we're not sure what it's going to be called yet. I wish we had a name. It's it's tentatively Flip or Flop Atlanta, right. uh, but that could change as well. So we'll just, fingers crossed, we'll see what it turns into. And in the show, you guys are obviously, you're just walking basically through the process of identifying uh, properties, finding these properties, uh, fixing them up, and then are you flipping them and then selling them? Or is it, it's a little bit different of what you're doing with uh, Georgia Residential Partners, obviously? Well, actually, no, it's it's right in line with our business, which okay. is, is flipping right. properties. And that sort of is our primary business right now is just straight fix and flipping on the open market. And, and the show really just sort of documents houses we're already doing in our business. So we talk about how we acquired the property and then, uh, you know, what we're going to do to the property. And then it documents the whole process of, of us getting it fixed. And, and sometimes, you know, we have issues with inspectors and I mean, we really document what's going on in the business. And then we ultimately put the house on the market. We have an open house, all that's documented. And then, uh, and then what it sells for. And then usually we film a little piece about what the house eventually sold for. We talk about what our profit is. And, you know, it is reality TV. And so there is, I mean, there, there, there are real numbers, what we paid for the house and what we sold the house for. Very, very interesting. I'm looking forward to taking a look at that. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, your unique selling proposition for Georgia Residential Partners, can you share a little bit of that if someone's interested in investing out of state? Because obviously, we're in the new economy, globally connected, you know, uh, on the internet, uh, you don't have to live in the market that you're investing. So if there's listeners outside of this that are interested in, in the Atlanta, what, what is your unique selling proposition with Georgia Residential Partners? So now when we talk to investors that are interested in investing with us, we really talk from two different standpoints. So we have investors that want to own properties. They want to own a cash flowing investment property or rental of some sort. And so that's something that we do. It's not necessarily a primary business, but we every month we sell a couple of, of houses that have tenants in place. We have the property management in place. We've been doing it literally for 12 years now. And so we're very good at it. We have all the players, the key teammates in place, the strong property management uh, and so for somebody that wants to own property in Atlanta, you know, obviously I think we've got more experience than any, any other company in Atlanta. Uh, but then we have investors who want a more passive approach. They don't necessarily want to be landlords, but they want a really solid return on their money. And so we work with a lot of private lenders in our business as well. So there's a lot of out-of-state investors who will maybe go into a self-directed retirement account and invest with us. And we give them a double-digit return as a first lien uh, – lender on a specific property so their money is always secured against real estate it's 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 recorded at the county level and so we have a lot of private lenders that love the the passive investment with us and still getting double digit returns on their money fantastic now uh, ken as an entrepreneur and investor we face adversity and it's not always rainbows and unicorns what are some of the biggest lessons that you've learned uh, on your journey and some of the best advice that you've gotten that's a good question um I tell you, the adversity over the last twelve years is is just the is a changing market. Uh, it's being in this industry. It's I feel like it's forever in flux. You're always 
you're always operating around a, a dynamic real estate market. And so some years, you know, you've got just a ton of inventory and it's easy to find houses and it's tricky to find buyers. And then they change the lending rules and, or the market changes. And so for us, I think it's just learning to adapt to the market changes has been our biggest challenge, but it's also probably been the reason we've been successful is I've seen a lot of real estate companies come and go, even in the Atlanta area, and it's because they haven't adapted to the market changes and the market cycles. And so for us, part of being successful and staying relevant is understanding what those market cycles look like and how do you change your business model to remain successful. Right, and that ties into my next question too because you're always studying and looking at the cycles and where you're at. Uh, one of the habits that I have observed from wealthy and successful people is that they're always studying new subjects and learning new skill sets. What are you currently studying and, and what skill sets are you currently learning? Um, you know, it's funny actually. Where I mean, for the last six months, I feel like the skill set I've been working on is uh, – is acting. I know that's so so cheesy, but it, well, you're on liter- a, you're on a TV. I'm on show. a TV show. I mean, I mean, a, two three years ago, if you'd asked me what I'd be working on, you know, in 2016, I, I never in a million years thought I would be honing my interview skills in front of a camera. But it's when you're literally doing that day in and day out, it's something that I'm constantly practicing and trying to be better at. And uh, you know, obviously, we're hoping for multiple seasons. Uh, but it, it, it it's funny being on TV is somewhat of a skill that. Uh, it, it takes practice to to get good at, and one thing my wife and I, you know, try to do is is put our head down and and work hard and, and give it our best, and hopefully we're doing a good job for HGTV. Well, that's great, and I mean, yeah, it's it's so true. Everything is a is a different skill set, right? Even starting a podcast and then interviewing and then being interviewed, all that type of stuff is different. Uh, so I can only imagine uh, being on, 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 you know, TV and then, <laughs> you know, yeah. here, here I can cut and edit it and say, oh, boy, that, you know, I really, uh, you know, messed that up a little bit. But, I mean, that you're, you're basically at that stage in the, in the hands of uh, the producers and the editors, and they might thought it makes great TV, right? You're, you're exactly right. That's, and that's the one thing Anita and I, my wife, we remind ourselves. It's like once, once you've said it, once you've done it, they own it. So be real careful what you say and how it comes out. Oh, my goodness. Now, a core message in our show is just to leave our families and communities and the world better than we found it by passing down a mindset and values and principles to future generations, not just money. So if you cannot Mm -hmm. pass on any money to future generations and you are only allowed to pass on three principles to them to build wealth and achieve happiness and success, what would they be? One I would say is uh, is be true to who you are. You know, part of I, I think the definition of success isn't necessarily monetary gain. It's it's uh, are you happy? Are you blessing others in your life? And a part of that is just being true to who you are. I mean, if you're an entrepreneur and you're stuck in a in a job that's that you just don't like, that you're miserable, and then you're probably not being true to yourself. And that was a big part of my journey was leaving a job uh, to venture into being an entrepreneur because I knew that was who I was at the core. And even my, my wife's a great example of this. I know her parents really wanted her to be an engineer or a doctor, but at her core, she, she wanted to be a teacher. She just knew that she, and she knew the salary was horrible, but that is what was going to fulfill her. And so sure enough, she went to school and became a teacher and did it for a number of years. And, and that's just who she was. She didn't make a lot of money doing it, but it was fulfilling to her. So I think principle one is be true to who you are. Um, you know, the other thing is I, I got some great advice from a from the manager of a very, very large REIT. And it was before we started, before I even got into real estate. I was asking, hey, I want to get into real estate. What, what, do, you, what do you think I should do? And he gave me some of the best advice that I would pass on to anybody. Is if you're going to do something, then you need to do it with all your heart. Don't do it half-ass. In real estate, I think it's the perfect example of this. People want to just kind of dab their toes and maybe put a little – if you're going to if you're gonna be a full-time real estate operator, not necessarily an investor, or you're going to be – full-time business owner, then you really need to do it with all your heart. You can't do it part way. Uh, and then three uh, is – this is some other advice I got from a, from a mentor of mine before I got started was to always operate from a place of integrity. And to me, that's carried me – well. there's so many opportunities when you're in business to uh, – 
to potentially compromise your integrity for the sake of a few dollars, and it's never worth it. A few dollars is never worth your integrity. And so for me and for our business, we always strive to operate from a place of integrity. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing that. There's so many good points that you made there in in those principles that you shared. Uh, One thing that I'll hit up on too, just on the real estate side, and for that matter, any any uh, endeavor that you're uh, going into and an opportunity um, you touched on of, of going all in and not just sticking your toe in it. And it's so important because, you know, especially the people that are listening, because there's a lot of things out there about flipping real estate, right? And I try to always remind people that, look, <laughs> you know, almost like warning, don't try this at home, <laughs> kids. Like these people that are extremely successful, such as yourself, uh, doing this are professionals. You've done mm-hmm. that. You've had people, when you initially started, you had people guiding you, obviously, and mentors as you were building your team. This isn't something that you were just dabbling in on the weekends. Um, you know, like uh, the same thing when it comes to the market, that 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 stock pick, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there's professionals doing it. So I always say, please be aware this, you know, this is a business, you know, Ken's doing this as his business. He has a team. He has systems. He has processes. He has a track re- record of doing this. He has mentors. He still educates himself. He's still he's still learning. Um, so not just something, uh, as you said, mentioned, stick your toe into it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I remember when I first started my business back in 2005, I just quit my day job. And I just remember that feeling of I have to make this work. And I, when I was working out of my basement and I, I mean, I'd put in 10 hours, 11 hours and I would make 50 phone calls in a day. And I was, I mean, it was really, I was hustling. I mean, that's the only way to put it because I had to make it work in my mind. And that's just a lot of hard work and dedication before it actually really grew into the business that it is. Are there any books that you would recommend that uh, have impacted you over the over the years? Uh, personal development, uh, or investing, um, and uh, yeah, any anything that have guided you? Um, yeah, there's a handful of good books. Uh, I mean, Rich Dad Poor Dad, obviously. I mean, if if you haven't read that, that's ob- I think that's I've had more people even mention that on my podcast as being a uh, mind shift for them. Right. And, and I think it, if you haven't read it, it's it's unbelievable in, in getting your mindset right about investing. Um, I like uh, Good to Great. I think there's a lot of really good fundamentals in Good to Great, uh, if you have, haven't read that. And then uh, most recently, the one that's impacted sort of the way I operate in my day-to-day business is The One Thing by Gary Keller uh, in terms of time blocking and being more productive with your time. That's been super helpful. That That's definitely a book that's that's got its time, right? Because there's a lot of people that have spoken about it. I've read it. It's amazing. Mm. Um, and it's, it's really, uh, I mean, it, that is definitely a book that a lot of, that, that has impacted a lot of people lately. So, um, if you're listening, definitely put that one in, on, on your list, but thank you for those recommendations. Absolutely. Now, Ken, how can my, my audience learn more about you, your company, uh, your awesome podcast, by the way. Um, and then obviously your upcoming show on HDTV and all of the other <laughs> projects that you're involved with. Well, I appreciate that. Um, so you know, our investing business is Georgia Residential Partners, and you can check us out online at gainvesting.com if you're interested in investing in Atlanta or, or doing some private lending with us. If you're interested in our podcast, it's it's the Deal Farm Podcast, and you can learn more about that at dealfarm.net. Well, Ken, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your journey and uh, just the lessons learned along the way and uh, providing so much value for my listeners. It's a fantastic experience, and I had a blast. Well, thanks so much for having me, MC. I appreciate it. Hi, this is MC Lobsher, the host of the Cashflow Ninja podcast. As you may know, I'm also the president and chief wealth strategist of Valhalla Wealth Financial. We help individuals, families, small businesses, entrepreneurs, and professionals build their wealth outside of Wall Street and help investors maximize the use of every dollar in their personal economy and boost their investment gains. We do this by combining their capital and investments with a financial vehicle of the wealthy, according to the infinite banking concept. If you are interested in learning more, you can email me at info at cashflowninja.com and I will send you a copy of Nelson Nash's book, 
Becoming Your Own Banker. Thank you for joining my guest, Ken Corsini, and myself on the Cashflow Ninja podcast today. If you like what you hear and appreciate what we're trying to build here at the Cashflow Ninja, please subscribe, rate, and review our show on iTunes and share our show with family, friends, and your network. I really have been humbled by your support and feedback and love receiving those daily emails from everyone. If there's any way that I can provide more value to you and serve you better or improve the show, please email me at info at cashflowninja.com. Don't forget to take advantage of the offers from our partners that aims to empower you to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Our healthy partner on it provides supplements, nutrient dense, and earth grown foods and fitness equipment to help you achieve your next level of well-being and total human optimization. Our listeners can get a 10% discount with coupon code Get on it at CashflowNinjaHealth.com. Our wealthy partner, Fundrise, gives everyone the opportunity to invest directly in high-quality real estate without the middleman. Fundrise makes the process of investing in the highest-quality commercial real estate from around the country simple, efficient, and transparent. You can get started with as little as $1,000 and do not have to be an accredited investor to participate in some of their offerings. You can check them out at CashflowNinjaWealth.com. And don't forget our wise partner, Audible. You can download any audio book for free when you try Audible for 30 days. You can download your free audio book at CashflowNinjaBook.com. That's our show for today, everyone. Until next time, live a life of passion and purpose on your terms. You have been listening to the Cashflow Ninja with your host, MC Laubscher. The podcast empowering and inspiring people to discover how to generate their own income and manage, grow, and protect their own wealth in the new economy. Today's show notes and resources are available on our website, CashflowNinja.com. This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. The information being presented and considered does not consider your particular financial objectives or situation, and it does not make personalized recommendations. This material is not intended to replace the advice of a qualified tax and legal advisor or other qualified professionals, and you should not use the information in place of a customized consultation with a licensed professional regarding your specific personal financial objective, situation, and needs. We believe the information provided is reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, timeliness, or completeness.